description of the whale live art creation sessions i'm your host show you already know that you hear my voice all the time what is up much love yeah so uh as you already know in our community we have some incredibly talented individuals uh they come from all walks of life uh they do everything from uh they're like project leads they're they're uh community activists in their home country they're 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 avid enthusiasts in sports all kinds of things and uh last but not least they're also actively interested in crypto art which is what bring which is what brought most of us here um yeah the nft and crypto art space is you know um providing opportunities for tons of people to really express themselves and really uh self-actualize what they felt they were always uh worthy of and capable of um all that being said this next particular artist i'm about to do uh introduce uh she is i would say the embodiment of that uh philosophy uh, she's an individual who, when it comes to really manifesting what's really uh, within her mind and her feelings and her heart, she's able to really communicate that in some pretty interesting and awesome ways. Uh, that being said, I would like to introduce the one, the only, Marino. Hi, Marino. Do you hear me? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, what's going on? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling so today? I'm happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Just a little bit tingling mm. uh, for, for being here, but I'm really excited. Yeah, no, don't be don't be nervous. You know, it's it's, it's the whale fam. It's, a, it's your community, you know? Yeah, I'm yeah. with my fam. <laughs> yeah. Hey, do me a favor. Uh, would you mind um sharing your screen? Yeah. Oh, and um, just give me a second. Mm -hmm. Is it working? Okay. Yeah, um... I think it is. All right. Just yeah, I'm going to open a random one just for now. <laughs> no, 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 it, it, it's up. So, hey, y'all. Yes. Uh, so Marino's uh, stream is up right now. So please do me a favor. Click on her name. And you'll be able to check out uh, her awesome work and we'll get deeper. We'll dive deeper into her process and the like. So, yeah, um, uh, please click on her I, name. For can I sorry. Sorry. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, can I share like also the um, the video from from the camera? Oh yeah, yeah. You, you can you can try to do that. Let's see. Oh, it says it isn't available for more than twenty five users. Oh yeah, so so you know how the whale community is. We tend to we yeah. tend to break things. <laughs> but this is this is this is okay. This is this is cool. I think this is alright for now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, just give me give me one. One second. All right, uh, Marino. So, um, many of the community members they know where you're from, but for for the people that will be tuning into this in the future, um, where are you from? I'm from Portugal. Okay. Uh, where whereabouts exactly? In the north of Portugal. Oh wow! How's the how's the weather out there? Uh, it's. It's pretty sunny um, all year round, although now it's been more rainy. The winter is coming. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not a I'm not a fan of, of the cold. I like warm. You know, I like to just you know be on beaches and 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 drink and and eat tons of food. You know, that's my vibe. <laughs> but, yeah. I love some snow though. We don't. It's very rare that we get snow. We have to go into the mountains. Oh really? Oh wait. So there, there are mountains in Portugal. Uh, please educate me. Yes, there's uh, 
Serra da Estrela, which means um, Star uh, Mountain, mm. I guess. And uh, there is where it usually snows. Oh, and wow. also you have the Pico Island in Azores. Someone is, is actually talking about it. Now it's really beautiful, but I've yet to visit. Oh, really? Oh, man. Maybe. Oh, you know what? Like, I plan on trying to visit um, every single country that all the whale fam are located in, you know, just do like a grand tour. So that, I think I may just try to do mm -hmm. that, you know? I may yeah, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. So, um, Marino, uh, do you actually prefer Marino or Ines? Either is fine. I like both. Okay. Well, I mean, well, well actually, well, well, truth be told, in our space, I mean, like, everyone knows you as Marino. So it kind of carries, mm -hmm. it carries some <laughs> weight now, right? <laughs> yeah. It's fun because when I was a child, I always wanted everyone to, um, you know, call me by Marino. But that that was more reserved to my uh brother so it's fun now that i'm marino here <laughs> yeah oh okay so that that kind of makes sense <laughs> uh that that's your older brother or or younger uh, both, or? both of them uh it, it was the younger actually <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh yeah speaking of your brothers and your influences uh would you say that they got you started in art or how'd you get started overall I'd say it was my mother. She's um, an artist. She's uh, mainly a, a kindergarten teacher, but she usually used to paint oil paint in our house. And I would want to use all, her, all of her materials and mess up her, her brushes. And I would destroy the materials. But that was like the thing that uh, like ever since I remember I, I was drawing or creating something. You know what they say about uh, children who are uh, like breaking the rules and like pushing boundaries and destroying stuff, right? That they're like the geniuses, you know? So that's yeah, a lot of... <laughs> I remember like uh, my mother saying, oh, be careful because these are very good pencils. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then I would dip them in water <laughs> and paint <laughs> them because they were watercolor uh, pencils. And now, like when I got into art school and I bought those pencils, I was like, oh, now I get it. This stuff is important. <laughs> That's hilarious. Like to me, that definitely sounds like you were um, exploring your capabilities there, you know. And it's funny that you mentioned watercolors. Hey, Whale Fam, since you're listening, uh, remember that I, uh, she mentioned watercolor because we're going to revisit that later on in the convo. But um yeah, uh, I can definitely relate to that. Uh, I've experienced situations where um, I would uh, I, I would kind of mix and match certain random things in like my house in order to try to achieve something, you know, and that speaks um, to the artist's inspiration as a child as a whole where they're looking for something that's not there so they're attempting to create it so even if there are boundaries you're looking to break them in order to create something incredible so I think mm. I think that says a lot about you again, you know um, yeah, and it's like it's when you're drawing something. There's the boundary is only the canvas, but inside that you can create anything you want. So um, it's fun for for a kid. Yeah, I think m most children like they draw and do stuff when they are little, and then when they grow up, it's when they stop kind of doing that. Yeah, it seems like society and societal pressures uh, specifically tend to inhibit the artist. You know. Um, mm -hmm. You may already yeah. you already may be inclined to be awesome and incredible, but then, you know, uh, you really have to learn how to resist against that negative force, you know, that kind of that tries to box you in, you know, so um, it takes time. Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. yeah, but, um, yeah so um, I'm pretty sure that you eventually figured out some structure because we see it in your artwork. <laughs> did you did you go to like a school eventually? Did you did you learn like officially or, or, or did your mom really like train you to be an artist? Um, yeah, I, I, I remember sometimes in the summer vacations, I would go into one class or two, but it was mostly like, um, I don't know what, where you study, like there's always 
growing up in school, you always have like an art class. And I always enjoyed that. And then in high school, I decided to choose, um, you can choose science or humanities or uh, arts or something else. And I chose arts. And then I went into fine arts in university. Oh, wow. We're, um, okay, th th there's a lot to unpack there. Um, I guess the first thing would be that, so it was a random art class that, that you took that kind of inspired you and then you went on to university is that correct yeah like it was mandatory for everyone to have that art class growing up and then in high school i chose it as a specific like orientation for the studies that you're uh doing mm -hmm. um yeah and if you want to go into fine arts that usually what you do or if you want to go into architecture mm. so yeah that's what i did yeah, that's that's actually that's pretty refreshing because we've had a we've had a string of guests who said that they weren't even into art before and then they kind of stumbled into it and now they're like really popular in our space. So um, it's actually really refreshing yeah. to hear that you uh, specifically are um, that you have this background, you know, and we can actually see it. I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely break that down uh, later on in a convo, but we can we can really see that that time and dedication is really there. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that uh, some people get into art very early, some people get like later, although I think it's like something that everyone can get into because everyone has creativity. And uh, so you can go into this, wake up one day and you're 50 and you decide, oh, I want to do this thing now. Uh, so I love that that is becoming more obvious to people and people are like uh, uh, starting to like um, think I'm too old for this thing and go into it because there's there's always that uh, potential to be explored I think it's just a skill as well right I agree I definitely agree with that um, that uh, age doesn't really have like an issue it's more a matter of like the heart and time that you put into the particular thing you can always manifest something great so for sure oh and that dragon is saying 50 is not old yeah i totally agree but some people even like they may be 20 years old and they think they are old so it's really definitely it's like a mindset you can be 90 and start painting like <laughs> i would i would really um how do you say endorse people in all walks of life to do anything they want yeah, uh, I agree. I feel like when it comes to uh, illustrating or creating a piece of artwork, um, you're really welcoming us into your world. You know, um, everyone has a story to tell. And, uh, mm -hmm. and sure. it, it's great that you mentioned that because I feel like with you specifically and your artwork, you tend to create a pretty vivid world, even if it's just a portrait of a particular piece, just like the one that we're looking at right now um you it, it tells you so much about where this 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 depiction like this character like where this person is who this person is like what their environment might be you know uh it, it says a lot you, you you put a lot of detail you know uh well mm -hmm. the piece that i'm referring to right now y'all if you look at the screen um there is a uh, a depiction of a character who is wielding a fireball and it just so happens that part of their body is that has elements of fire to it you know it may actually be fire i mean um, marino could probably shed a little bit more light on that but um it be i believe that it's pieces of fire in the hair and um in the clothing too yeah um like this is something that um i recently started to explore um in the like in more obvious or more in, the, in a more conscious way which is to like go into my imagination and put it out there something that excites me and um because when you are like in fine arts or studying art more like uh, in a more con contest uh, context specific way um you have all of these things that you learn to do uh, all of these rules that you have to follow 
and you have to practice hands and you have to practice anatomy and you have to practice perspective and sometimes along the way you kind of lose like what uh, brought you in and that kind of leads to art blog as well and I was kind of feeling like before I did this piece and a couple of pieces before this I was like going through art blog I felt like everything was hard and then I was um, I was actually coached on this and it was just a simple idea of like doing the favorite things that you have in your mind and all of a sudden like I saw myself like it doesn't it doesn't need to be good and you can think whatever about this painting, but while you're painting it, like, there's these thoughts, oh, what if is it good? What if it isn't? But then I was like, whatever, I'm just, I just want to draw this uh, fantastic character that is made, parts of him light up in fire and he can manipulate fire and his body combusts and he's like charcoal skin and... Uh, the the lips are like it's almost like he's made of fire in, on the inside and he's able to activate this and um yeah it's like it's such i don't know it's such a ride to be able to go into your imagination like that yeah yeah um like the, uh, the the reason why I'm actually really happy that we're looking at this piece in particular is because I love the um, the feelings that are evoked through this. You know, it seems like um, this character seems very calm for someone who literally has fire, like he's controlling <laughs> fire. You know, and uh, um, obviously yeah. when when it, uh, when it comes to fire, it's like uh, everyone thinks smoldering, wild crazy destroy like destruction but he seems so relaxed and he's just he's gazing into the his own fire you know so it seems mm -hmm. like he's he's at peace with it and um i see like uh that, that that's why i was really excited to talk to you because i love how you're able to capture these things you know uh, but um i think the main thing is how you're able to to really depict this with the skill like there seems like there's so much control and i'm going to talk about that too later on but there's so much control in your line work you know, um, and things like mm -hmm. that. So, uh, oh, speaking, the, sp sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say like, um, it's like I said, like I've been doing this since I remember. And so there's like a lot of years that go into this. So my process has become quite intuitive, but mm -hmm. like this can be, be broken down and I've seen, I like, I have friends that started like learning art and they've made massive progress in two years. But yeah, like, um, it's really, it's really cool when, when you can uh, grab the experience that you have and just let it support whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's like, it's like, a, it's, uh, a play that you, a game that you play, with uh, with your ideas and what your what you can do and stretching that and um, while you're doing that you like um, you practice, right? Mm -hmm. You practice. You you keep you keep evolving. Yeah, I guess I guess uh, I was gonna I was gonna save it, but we can actually explore this right now. So. Um, what I appreciate most about your work, uh, actually, wait, would you mind um, showing us that full screen where, where it displays most of your works? Oh, this, I only have like, do you want to see more or is this okay? Oh, no, this is good. This is perfect. Okay. All right. Yeah. So um, what I appreciate most about you as an artist is, um, well, for one, your pieces look like they're all hand drawn that's one thing and then but the thing again with your line work it looks as if your hand control is really strong so this is like uh this is something that speaks to like years of training just like you said um uh, and uh it really it really shines through where um this level of ability is uh it takes a long time like this is all muscle memory and really trusting yourself you know um mm -hmm. each 
each piece is like it's not like whimsical you know you can really see like you meant to create this diagonal you meant to have this line bolded you meant to have the shade really there you know uh, everyone again please look at the screen and you can see um there's a there's a commonality with most of the uh, most of the pieces that are here you know yeah it's like um um when i'm when i'm working and you you know this uh, probably know this as well because you're an artist too right uh so like you sometimes you get into a state of flow and right. things just flow right but when you stop you can see like um the decisions that you made and why and you can even like uh, reflect on them later like why did i wanted to do this and uh, why why did I want to like this composition is more circular while the other one was more um, sharp, vertical or triang triangular. And um, wh while I'm painting, I can see I can actually see myself making decisions and thinking what or feeling what feels right and what doesn't. And and having like at the same time that it's intuitive, I'm having like a, a rational discourse on the back of my mind. Like, oh, okay, I want, to, I want this to stand out more and I want this to fade more. And that control that you have, like, for example, it's what you call um, uh, soft edges and hard edges. Like, it's, it's so interesting when you, when you like play with it and all the other stuff as well but like the contrast where you where you push and pull the colors where you fade them and every time that you f like i love colorful stuff as you as you can see but it was so interesting when i learned that um when i use muted colors i can actually achieve colors more vivid because in contrast they'll be much brighter and vivid Right. Yeah, that was um that that was something else I was gonna talk about too. But I wanna I wanna um I wanna talk about flow state since you mentioned it because uh, I feel like this is a gem, you know, that you just dropped on everyone. So well, fam, everyone listening, uh, please uh, play, uh, pay pay close attention to what she just said and what I'm about to piggyback with. Right, um, Marino, uh, just she 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 explained this really well. It's a point where your when you're creating something it's less about you making strong uh strong choices like strong where like each thing needs to be correct it's more of a feeling right and i would say that feeling is like it's like a warm feeling where like it's not 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 flow to be whimsical but more like each decision is in line with what you're imagining the overall piece is going to be so um Every move that you make is always in line with that. And it's less about you having a conscious thought. It's more like you're tapping into your subconscious. There, there, there's less barriers when you're creating. And you're <laughs> literally flowing, for lack of a better term, where the color, her, her color choice, for example, or like her use of contrast is going to, it's going to come because the piece is asking for you to use that contrast. So that's what, that's what she was also saying. And um, in many in many art circles, right, whether you're a writer, you're a performance artist, things like that, they say the first thing you do is create with your heart. And then the second thing you do is go back and you edit with your head. Right. Um, mm. There's a, there's an even higher level to that wisdom. That's wisdom right there. Right. But there's an even higher level. And it's within this flow state where the choices are happening in real time. So it's not really an edit. It's more like this piece is being created right now and it may get to the point where you may not even have to go back and make final touches. It's like you're really in it and you can really complete this piece right now, you know? So um, it's really like a, it's a feeling. So each feeling all kind of feels warm each time, you know, each movement feels mm -hmm. warm and uh, it's just more of this. So yeah, not to put words in your mouth, Marino, but uh, please let me know if that's um, uh, how you feel about that. Yeah, I totally agree. It's like, um, uh, oh, I, I just, my, my, my mind just went blank, but like thinking about what you were saying, like the, 
it's um oh yeah i remember now what i was going to say it's like when you are in the state of flow like when you finish that piece on that uh session i guess you can call it it feels so good because it's like you you look up because you, you, I, I'm looking at the, the painting, but then you look up, it's like, wow, time just uh, flew by. And sometimes like, um, okay, so at the end of, of those moments, I always like take a step back and think, um, what does this look like? Is, is Do I uh, like what is happening? Does it need some tweaks? Is something looking off? And usually like, you may need maybe a bit more time on it, but it's like some final tweaks that I find that happen there. And um, sometimes a, a painting can take you five sessions. And so it, for me, they will happen, those moments after the flow will happen after each of those sessions, the end of the, those sessions. And then next session, I will pick it up and it starts the same way as it ends, like I'm looking at it and thinking more rationally or, or trying to capture like what I want to feel while painting this. Um, what do I want this to make me feel? And then if all goes well, you go into the flow state again and then come back. Yeah, right. but I totally agree with you. Right, right. Yeah, it's like it's like kind of like jumping, um, like sometimes it could go straight through or it could be like leapfrogging, like through the feelings, you know, and time does mm -hmm. kind of pass. So that's cool. Um, yeah, speaking of uh, hand control and line work, uh, what tools do you use to create your artwork? Really, like I use mostly this this uh, program, which is um, Procreate. It's mm. a mobile app that you can use on your iPhone and iPad, uh, especially for the iPad, because uh, I'm not sure if the Apple Pencil works with the iPhone, but yeah, have like this, uh, it feels really good the way it responds. I can, I can show it like um, you have all of these brushes uh, that comes with it and they have like textures that can really like uh, feel um, traditional even if you want it, if you want it. Wow. So oh. yeah, go ahead. No, uh, I didn't mean to, to interrupt. I'm just kind of blown away because this, I believe this is, you're the first artist who, who openly said that they use this tool and this tool looks awesome, by the way. This looks like real, this is like really, really like simple compared to Photoshop. Yeah, I started with Photoshop because that was what was um, more readily available as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I still use it because there are, there are things that I prefer to use on Photoshop. But uh, like with this thing, I can just sit on the couch and paint if I want. Which is like what usually happens now. Um, I paint on my couch. <laughs> so like I but I actually bought this because I had like a freelance um project that I had to do and I was also hired to teach uh kids animation so um to save time I would I I bought this to paint on the train while I was going to the school um and I fell in love with it basically uh, and then uh, something happened as well, like three years ago when I when I got this tool, uh, my my favorite Procreate brushes, uh, I don't know, they bugged and I lost them. Oh, and no. I never got them. Yeah, I never got them to work quite exactly how they were because then Photoshop also updated oh, and they God. changed they changed a little bit like the dynamics how the brushes worked. And they are supposed to be better, but I just lost those. So then I was, I remember like, oh, whatever. I'm just going to paint on, on Procreate. Um, but there are like, there's Clip Studio Paint, which is also like, it's really um, affordable. 
that you can use both on your computer and on mobile. Um, like, and the, the, all of them work kind of the same. You have layers, you have layer modes, you have brushes and you have like erasers and then you have like these adjustments are really cool um, because like if I feel like maybe the color is not like really cool, I can just change it anytime that I want. But yeah, like they're, um, they're basically the same. Mm. It's more, I think it's more, um, you, you have more learning, a learning curve when you're changing from traditional to digital and vice versa mm -hmm. than between software. But in the software, the thing that really matters are the brushes. That's what gives you the feel, right? Yeah, let me let me just say for one thing for uh for everyone listening, all right. Um it's not that it's not that uh Marino lost like a I don't know, maybe like like her like her bus ticket or something or like a piece of clothing, you know, that she can buy back. Um like to the artist, it's kind of like if you 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 moved out of an apartment and you left like some really important information and then you try to go back into that apartment and for one you can't get into the apartment and two the information is not there anymore that's the equivalent uh, the equivalent for her not being able to use the brushes that she was using for photoshop and photoshop updating it's like the, the amount of time it takes for you to really um pull all this like together in order for you just to create it takes a really long time you know um like that, that this this really matters like to the point where it may be it may even be discouraging you know for an artist it's like man i have to waste all this time just trying to get my butt my brushes right you know like i just want to create right now i'm inspired right now you know imagine that you know, that's like another hurdle so like trust me like when she said that i felt it like i felt like it was like something in my chest you know but yeah the... it's like sorry no no it's okay go ahead uh i was gonna say like it's like uh uh, when you when you try when when I love to try new software, so whenever I try, I'm like looking to the brushes, and then when you find one that feels really good, has the right texture, and it like it responds in the way that you that you love, um, that that thing like kind of becomes your favorite tool to work, like your favorite pencil. So when you lose that, it's like. Where did it go? What can I do now? But like, you can also do the basic same things with the round that I showed here before, which is like these brushes, the the round brush, mm -hmm. which is like great if you want to to learn how to blend and to uh, learn everything without the the fancy brushes. Mm -hmm. But like. If it makes your life, if you feel better when using the other brushes, why wouldn't you use them? Right. It's like, I agree. It's like your favorite mug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. But, your but favorite, that's... Yeah, your favorite, uh, oh, how do you call pan? Oh, oh like bread? Oh, 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 like cooking pan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh my god, like I'll be, I'll feel so sad if I couldn't cook the way I normally cook, you know. <laughs> but 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 this is great though because uh, speaking of tool, like I mean, you have Procreate and Procreate looks awesome, especially knowing that that you're able to create the things that you create now using this. I I'd say, hey, like you you could throw away Photoshop and Illustrator and just use this right here, you know, and be really happy. Oh yeah, and I I remember like when I. Uh, was doing freelance work, I was thinking, oh, maybe I can just, instead of using Photoshop, I can use Krita, which is open source. Mm. And um, I actually did a, a whole concept using that that uh, software. And it's like, it proved me, yeah, it's possible. It's just that I'm so much faster at the time in Photoshop that there, there was no use of changing. Um, but like Procreate, like you can even use it on, uh, on smaller iPads. So if you, if you like, don't have uh, money to buy a computer and I'm not saying like that it's better because a computer is also always like more flexible. You can do 3d work. You can do, 
you can write on and you can do all of this stuff but it's so awesome that this mobile it's a, a, a tablet it's becoming so flexible that it's the main tool of a lot of artists and there's one concept artist that i love his work he worked for crash bandicoot that just was released mm -hmm. and spiral and he only uses this one to mm. to do his professional work perfect like this is and he threw away Photoshop, just like you said. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, it, it's so funny that you brought that up because that's a perfect segue into one of, what I wanted to talk about next. Um, would you mind going back to your previous screen so we can look at all of your artwork? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so, right? Um, I was really excited to talk to you because... Um, your pieces have like an ethereal quality to them, right? And uh, which is dope because I'm actually an avid RPG player and I'm really into sci-fi fantasy novels. And oh. uh, uh, yeah, a lot of your pieces, they give me like a vague, like uh, th they're vaguely reminiscent of things that I've played in the past, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I love the fact that um, a lot of your pieces tend to feel like they're like characters in like a game. So when you brought up Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, I was like, yeah, I was like, oh my God, like, oh, Marino, please like, let me know. Like, are you interested? Like, are you, are you into like the sci-fi fantasy thing? Like, is that like an inspiration? I freaking love it. It's like, uh, first, I also grew up with games. Games taught me uh, English. Um, and uh, I think that all of all of that inspiration all of that uh, fantasy um uh, how do you say influence comes a lot from games mm -hmm. and also books i also used to read a lot of books because um like since i have like a a visual memory and vivid um imagination it was so fun to um, to read because I could see all of those things that were being uh, described. Mm -hmm. And then you have like uh, the world of um, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and all of these magical fantasy stories really, really influenced me. Um, and about the games, it's like, yeah, I love that that is so much so apparent so obvious like there's so many different kind of games but i always love like games that have some color imagination into it and fantasy uh, if it's realistic i will enjoy it for the experience and i will probably be like whoa this is really well made but with fantasy stuff my eyes like uh, Evil glitter, you know, shining. They shine looking at the stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's I like get... it's beautiful and it's magical and it's fantasy, yeah. and you can play with them at the same time and explore the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we get that feeling. Like seriously, like looking at each of your pieces, it feels like that. I was like, oh man, no, nah, she definitely was like into this, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> speaking speaking of that, uh, Gigi and said. Uh, he would like to see the Witcher thing that oh. you created. I, I guess there's a Witcher thing. Oh, wow. This hey, hey y'all, check out the screen if you can. Uh, please check out. If you're in the voice channel, please uh, pull up, uh, click on Marino and check out the screen. Oh, wow. This is awesome. So this is... It Gar was, uh, yeah, it was like um, uh, Saturday. I, I made a, a stream to uh, practice or get comfortable with, uh, with this one. And uh, I'm, I've joined um, a zine, uh, which the theme is Witcher. So I was getting into the mood and drawing Yennefer mm. from the Witcher. Mm -hmm. And like the, the drawing on the left is more uh, like a free exploration, but thinking what makes her her, like mm -hmm. it's the necklace or the expression. Um, but uh, then I, I decided to, the middle one, I just really took a frame from the show and tried to capture her under like that, that feeling. Because then it gets, when I, when I go into my own pieces, 
um, what I've just what I've just done will inform the feeling or the mood that I want to build on the next one. I like that. So, I like that yes, a lot. I like to I like to do like these um, explorations before like warm ups. Yeah, it's kind of like you're not that you're really tracing over someone else's artwork. It's more like you're um, you're allowing your mind to really truly understand that particular subject. And then you're you're um, you're challenging yourself to really communicate that in a new way or a new form. Uh, just speaking, since I'm I'm really a big fan of The Witcher, actually more so the books and the game, not the new TV show. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but but yeah, I can I, I can say that you caught Yennefer, um, especially. Uh, let me see. So on the so the left version of her that you drew right here, right? You caught you you captured Yennefer, uh, her younger self. Well, actually. There's a whole thing behind it. Basically, like she's she's young, but then she goes really old, and she uses magic to keep herself looking young, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so so the left side, right? That's actually the younger her that I see, even though she has like the the jewels and stuff like that. And then the way you captured her on the right is really her as like the actual like her essence, like like uh, the fem the femininity, uh -huh. which, which which is what I was gonna get into too with you, uh, the femininity that you caught here is uh it's 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 really strong like and i like it it's really it's really good um there's oh i love i love strong women yeah you know this is something <laughs> yeah this is something that i really noticed about your work uh i was gonna um, yeah we'll talk about this now um i really appreciate because I'm actually exploring this too with my own work and I'm not not really to project my, my anything I'm doing <laughs> onto you but it's more like uh, I really respect this you know especially in the crypto art scene where um it may be it may be uh, ratio wise there may be more men to women and they're depicting things from their perspective I actually appreciate when women um, are really creating freely and really expressing themselves to their highest extent you know that being said, I love when women are exploring the divine feminine, you know, and um, it, it, if we look back at your pieces again from the previous screen, um, we could kind of see that, like, I love how you're able to capture. I mean, obviously, like, it helps that you are a woman, but um, I love that you're able to capture the divine feminine, you know, the female form in different ways. And it's not... Um, like sexuality is cool, but it's not like, oh, heavy handed, like, oh, here's a woman, here's her body. Right. It's more like, no, you really want you want to capture more so feelings, the colors, maybe her thoughts, you know, and mm -hmm. the line and the, and the lines and shapes that complement that, you know, that that speaks to me. You know, I really respect that. You know, um, it's it's something that I feel we need this in the crypto art community where women are really expressing themselves and their perspectives. I mean, not that women are a monolith that we all should like women all share one perspective. There's multiple perspectives, you know, there's multiple kind of lenses, I would say. And I love the fact that you're able to use um, these colors, not that pink is a female color, but I love that you use the fuchsia, magenta, the purples, and they, um, and you also use greens, you use a lot of reds and like, there's like a golden kind of amber thing too, that comes across in a lot of your work too and i just love that you use this you know um would you mind speaking more to um femininity yeah like um uh i think growing up um girls are usually um fed this kind of story of what being a girl means and you can like usually you you see girls going like um responding to it in all of different kind of ways and you, they can either they can go like uh, they can love pink and go into it and i remember when i was really small i liked pink and then i grew up and i hated pink absolutely like don't give me anything pink don't give me skirts don't give me girly things <laughs> and uh, i remember that i i, I felt like it was um, a way of me trying to build my own identity and thinking that uh, the girls that were girly were less than me because they weren't trying to be their own selves. And then I grew up and I started to become more aware like this, this was also a story 
that um, like it's it's also told to to girls that they have to compete against each other and if you don't it's like when you rebel it's because you're really angry at something and then i started to accept like oh i can like pink and the other girls can can like pink and they don't need to be dumb or lesser than and they can like punk rock or metal and like we can be the same and there's not like a box where like there's a title where being a woman is this so i like to explore i like to explore uh, different kinds of ways of being girls or being women and um, it's always on my own lens and on, and how i view it um but i also love to sing like the super girly stuff or the super and i say girly but it's not girly it's just it's we we i guess it's like a way that we the society um labels it but it's just soft and guys and boys can like it too and i really like in a way i try to express that view in my work uh even if i don't draw flowers i still enjoy flowers or uh, i can draw like uh, powerful characters and still like i can i can like everything right and women can like everything and they can be sexual and they can be sexual on their own ter terms and sensual or they can like be asexual on their own terms as well and uh, like i don't ex i don't think i explore that um super obviously on my work but i hope that it it's kind of imbued with that with that perspective like uh, breaking those boundaries of what being a woman and even a man or a boy means um does this make sense yeah yeah very much so uh yeah it's like to the point where everyone is really digging what you're saying right now it's really yeah the essence you know the it's the the essence of femininity that really comes out in your work uh regardless of the gender because i mean obviously you're creating men here too but it's like the essence of this behind it backing it anchoring it is really awesome it's really captivating you know it's refreshing you know um, mm -hmm. Oh, and I also wanted to say something related to this and to the, the, the fire character that you were talking before. Mm -hmm. It's like when you were saying that he looks really calm with this very volatile and powerful element that he's controlling. I really like um, um, painting the, um, the concept of it's not what it seems, like there's some kind of mystery and you can like you can look at an artwork and you can uh, put your own meaning into, into it. You can think, uh, for example, this one, the thing that draw, drawn me into it was like, he may look evil to some people because there's all of this theme kind of seems evil because it's red, it's the white snakes and the, the way he's looking at us but he's not, he's not necessarily evil. And I think that the expression he has and the snakes, the, the, the way the, the expression is as well, kind of hints you that, oh wait, maybe this isn't evil after all. And the same with, um, with the femininity. Uh, it's like, it's not obvious what if they are, like good and evil start, uh, stop like, losing meaning or they kind of blend and it's more like your perspective that goes into it yeah i i, I definitely agree that um yeah it's uh it's through everyone's lens you know we see a certain piece or an artwork differently um you know well obviously the way i'm speaking sometimes it may come across as if like i'm projecting my own um thoughts and opinions on it but i definitely agree with you i would say uh if you pull up that 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 piece one more time with the snakes 
Um, I like that piece a lot. Um, I, I I wasn't I wasn't actually getting any evil vibe. You know, uh, I I see more so the symbolism. So I'm really mm-hmm. like getting I'm I'm attempting to really understand you as an artist, right? So if I see a piece like this, uh, I'm actually knowing knowing what a snake means, right? And the fact that you have the symbol um right right in the center of, of like what well, in between the eyes uh in between the eyes right and like just a little bit above in the forehead lets me know that it's wisdom so the snake the the the, the original symbol behind a snake is wis- wisdom not really something evil it actually means supreme wisdom you know so and and the look of kind of somewhat like um it looks a little bit euphoric so really it kind of seems like he's ascending you know where where he's become um omniscient you know so now he's all knowing you know now that he knows all these things he feels pretty satisfied that's that's kind of what i'm getting from this right here it may obviously it may mean something different to everyone but that's kind of the the vibe i'm getting from this as a whole yeah that was kind of like um what i was um i trying to express um like not the fact that it's not evil it just is and uh, but but what i was uh, trying to say is like the evil thought came to me when i was looking at it and like uh, at a glance it could seem evil do you know what i mean like overall and then you look into it more closely and you start looking at his expression but yeah, it's like uh, in, I guess the imagery that usually comes up uh, traditionally, but probably just like the thought of snakes and color and the red and the black. Traditionally, it reminds me of evil, but the is- illustration itself, it's not that concept. But I I like playing with that. Uh, or at least it happens in my mind that game and um yeah it's like like um this in common because everyone like comes from different uh, experiences yeah i agree and um yeah, I, I actually love when artists like that. There's a little bit more than what's what you think is on a surface. So yeah, I agree that at first glance they may think that, but then if they really look, there's a whole lot. There's like a lot of jewels within the piece itself, and I like that you captured yeah. it so perfectly. Um, all right. Uh, would you would you want to go back to that original sketch uh, sketch screen, and uh, let's let's explore a little bit. Oh, this uh, one. Yeah, yeah. Would you would you want to um uh uh cook something up a little bit we could talk a little bit more but i would love love to see you do your thing a little bit me too like i thought like i actually could uh, use this opportunity to um, draw a whale oh okay and see what comes up i think yeah and like um uh, and oh, and uh, sometimes I see questions, and I'm I'm sorry, everyone. Like it's hard to keep up with with everything going on. Oh no, I was actually um, gonna uh, uh, on your behalf. I was gonna go back a little bit and um, ah, okay, that's yeah, awesome. s- source source the questions while while you're doing your thing. So it's all good. Okay, so like one thing that um, I guess when I have an idea. There's this image that comes in, in in my mind, but it's not. It can be clear, clear, uh, clearer sometimes, but usually it's like an idea, like we've been talking about, um, of a feeling, and a, a kind of uh, thing that I that I'm thinking of portraying. So when I when I'm thinking of drawing a whale. I'm thinking, okay, but how can I make it interesting and fun for me? It's it's always putting, sprinkling a bit of magic. It's what I've learned. And, and, uh, and I, I'm just going to touch uh, up on this a little bit. Like uh, this, um, this artwork from the, the fire, 
I was almost going to abandon it. What? Uh, yeah, what? I was like, oh, this is, I was like procrastinating on it. And I've learned when you're pro procrastinating on it, on something, like it means something is not quite, like you can look into it. And so I looked into it and it was super boring. Like it was just like a random dude holding fire, a fire magician. And I was like, okay, wait, but I'm making this boring. Why? If I love this kind of stuff, then I'm going to make this my kind of stuff. And so that's when I kind of went wild on the fire on his clothing. That's like actual fire on his hair as well. And it became much more expressive. And I, I can all, I try to see if I can uh, find the layers to see like when it was like feeling boring to me let me see if i can find it or oh, maybe like when it was like this i guess uh no it was even earlier oh my god y'all oh, yeah. th th this is like this is super gold right here like what she's what she's about to show you the fact that she's letting you into her mind right now is like just just if you can just play pay attention if you can okay so i can show it but yeah um i'm just going to okay so it's pro it was probably here yeah or even here it was like yeah you know uh kind of generic elf and but then that's when the magic happens it's like okay how can i make this really exciting for me to spend time on this thing and to explore my imagination and that's when the you start adding stuff and now i don't even know what layers were but then you get this hmm. basically but it's just, it's just, uh, I guess I'm, I'm teaching a mind trick for anyone who may be struggling with procrastination or, or art block. Uh, first, you can abandon a piece. It's okay. It serves its purpose. And second, how can you make it fun, really fun for yourself? Yeah. I hope, I hope you guys caught that because that's like, oh man. Uh, she, okay, this is one of the biggest like obstacles that people deal with, you know, um, uh, we, we, we've had plenty of artists come on here and talk about that from Javier Ares, uh, we've had George Boyer talk about it, we had Meta Guys talk about it, we've had Katie Arrington talk about this, and she actually coaches people through this, where you may feel like you're procrastinating a little bit, or there's a piece that um, it's not fully cooked, and sometimes you need to sit and marinate with it. You know, mm -hmm. and, and and then um, if you give it enough time and really uh, get into the flow state that Marino was, was talking about previously, you'll you realize that the feeling there needs to be more feeling, basically more you, and you can find the solution. You know, which is what she did with that fire piece. You know, hey, um, Katie is my coach, so a oh. lot of this stuff, like she t she taught me this, and I I try to like whenever um, i'm talking about this stuff like mentioning her because she's really good like really really good at that you're good too don't don't minimize <laughs> yourself you are you are good no okay <laughs> <laughs> thank you but yeah uh, of course like uh, uh, whatever she taught me i had to go and and use it so it's always on you to put the, the knowledge into practice. Yeah, I definitely, I like that. See, again, oh my God, Marino, again, another, another gem for, for people <laughs> listening. It's like, yeah, it's like uh, people can preach to you. You can watch a ton of uh, YouTube videos from really strong and popular artists, and you may not be able to uh, put that into practice. Like she said, you know, um, it really is up to you to really uh, put the pieces together, you know, and try to like create the pieces with all the wisdom that you've accumulated. So, yeah, solid. Yeah, absolutely. 
Oh, this is a nice whale. Oh, so many good whales. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere. Like, uh, and this is how I usually work. I put the references on this little part of the screen and just kind of seeing them all together. Uh, that's important because uh, then you're not like just pulling from one of them, right? Mm -hmm. You're making your own collage in your mind. So, but I know like I want this, this flow here on the line. Um, and I think uh, we have like uh, Camo watching. She's really good at um, at um, uh, animation and um, drawing animals. And I'm sure she knows about like this is called the line of action, mm. which you can use like to guide the eye. So when you can do this with people and with animals, um, you want uh, main of the main things of or the elements of what you're drawing to follow this line, mm -hmm. so you can get like really flowy and energy into the drawing. Yep. Yeah. I uh, shout out to Camo. That's another. That's another gem right there. Yeah. She just posted a, a um, an emoji in the stream text channel. But yeah. Yeah. So the line of action is uh, is a pretty powerful tool. You know. Um, for larger pieces, it's also used. I've mentioned this previously with other artists too. Um, it's also used to really uh, educate the the viewer on how they should interpret the piece or where their eyes should go. You know, so they're not stuck on um, focusing on a, a, a certain part of the piece that doesn't need any any attention. You know, uh, so yeah, the, I like the use of the line of action right here. Yeah, and uh, later on you can, I guess you can deviate from it and see what works, but it's really helpful set the energy yeah. of what you're doing. And you can, you can uh, push and pull the shapes um, how you want them, like, you know, you know, the um, what do you call this? This part right here? Of oh, the fin. The fin, yeah. You know, the fin has a certain shape, but you can kind of pull it uh, to fit like the um, the movement that you want to portray. It's kind of what like what you do in caricature. Mm. Your eyeball in caricature is so interesting because you can you can pull push and pull stuff and it still looks like the person that is trying to mimicate, um, imitate. And sometimes it's even more easier to express it in a caricature because the, the obvious uh, caricature, uh, no, um, how do you say, um, characteristics of someone are in evidence so it, when they are in evidence, you, are, you recognize who it is. Mm. Hey, y'all, just so you know, if, if I ever go quiet, it's not because I don't have anything to say. Again, it's me <laughs> paying attention to the artist doing their thing. And also that gives you an opportunity to digest any gems that they may have just said, like the one she just said right now. She's, she's, this, this is one of those, um, sessions where people, I believe will play it back a couple of times in order to educate themselves overall on process. So, um, that's, uh, that's, a, a kudos, kudos to you, Marino. Oh, and thank you for like guiding all of this, uh, this talk is really, it really makes it easier to articulate the thoughts that artists um, have on their minds. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone in a whale in a whale fam knows that I'm I'm a I'm bullish on artists here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm big bullish on yeah. artists in in all forms, mind you. Yeah, yeah, for sure.
Yeah, y'all. And... So, so my, my eyes are on the shapes of the whale right now. If you can check it out in the screen. I'm looking at certain things. And I'm, like I'm, I'm watching these tiny thumbnails right off the shape of the of the whale and like this is where I zoom in because I want to see how the the islands and the and the whale and I see that when it turns right here there will be an eye there mm. and I can just place it like for now here and it will at least inform me and I can tweak things as I go forward. And now I'm, I, I will keep, actually, I, I will merge this with the drawing before, but I will duplicate it so I don't lose it. Yeah, smart. Oh my God, super smart. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like just just like the feeling that you get if like Photoshop gets an update and you lose your brushes, the same <laughs> feeling happens if you create something really dope. You're in the flow state, all this stuff is happening. Everything was just working out too too good, and then uh, you you lose it. Like you lose the entire thing. You have to start it all over or something. Oh my god. Oh right, that's actually that's. In my experience, that's one of the good things of Procreate, but it kind of saves your process. And really? it has to, really? I, yeah, yeah, like if I if I, I don't need to click save anywhere, I can just go back and it's saved. Um, but it has crashed on me, it, like where it freezes, it kind of freezes. Um, but I haven't had much trouble with it. Still, and I think people have lost files, but it hasn't happened me to me like in uh, uh, I don't know three years, four years. Oh, that's three. fine. Then. That's okay. cool. So I mean... like uh, okay, I because it, in in Photoshop or in three D in three D software this happens a lot. It's like. Uh, anytime the program uh, crashes, it's like a reminder for you to learn how to save often and save lots of um, backups. Yeah, I, I've, I've learned the hard way. Um, yeah, I mean, but I guess the great thing about Procreate is that if, if it crashes every three years, I mean, there's so much I can create <laughs> in three years that i'm cool i'm cool with that i mean photoshop crashes every three minutes sometimes you know so. yeah and and like uh, i um i was recently um backing up my files and i had so many different versions of the same file in when i was working in photoshop uh, because i have that like fear that the file would corrupt while I'm sleeping and you would like try to open it and it wouldn't work. It has happened before. So, so it's good that you have different versions, like, or you save in increments and then you delete. Um, but I never deleted. So I had tons of gigabytes in, in files that I didn't need. Oh my God. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I mean that 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 must affect like your computer overall and its performance. But <laughs> I don't blame you. I do it too. I'd I'd save early and often, you know. Well, now now I don't have as much, uh, so I'm I'm fine. I like I delete a lot, but it, I guess it was just more like I needed to buy more storage, um, and then the managing all of those files. I I like I. Think I was like three days backing up everything and deleting the files that I didn't need. And this is um, part of the of the job, you know. So you get smarter as you go. Yeah, definitely. It teaches you about technology, you know, that's a, <laughs> a crucial aspect. I yeah. mean, you can, you, you can be super talented, right? But then there's the little things, you know, it's like, oh, uh, how much RAM does my computer have? It's like, if my if my computer is slow, it's gonna mess up my inspiration. It's gonna make me not want to draw, you know. 
For sure, yeah. It's always lagging when you're drawing. That oh. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> This whale looks so peaceful. It's like it's, if it were in the water, it's just like chilling. Yeah, like they, um, they look kind of scary, I guess. <laughs> but they only eat plankton, so yeah. I don't know what the problem. <laughs> no, they're not. Uh, no, no, I never thought of whales as being scary at all. I like, I like that they're so huge that they're like big. Yeah. You know. But like the, um, yeah, I guess I'm thinking of the killer whales. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even those, though. And, they, and those look, those are the cutest. <laughs> <of> yeah. The <laughs> you know, like, they, they are so cute. Dab Dragon said that they're majestic. Yeah, they are. Yeah, mm. yeah. Your line work, your line work is so like, it's, it's top tier, you know, it's definitely top tier. If you, if people choose to write, if people choose to use brushes, you know, it, it really does take a lot of time just to get that down. It I would, I would equate it to being a, like a martial art, you know, it's like the, the amount of time and muscle memory. Again, it's, it takes a lot of time just so you know, FYI y'all, but it's worth it. Cause if you get to that point. You can you you can manifest so much. Oh, it's super worth it, and uh, I guess the the way to to get there is just enjoying whatever the thing you're doing. And um, like I I see whatever uh, thing that I'm doing, and I can see like. Um, there's still so much that I can improve. But it doesn't matter as much when you're enjoying, like you can still improve while you go. But like when I when I see like, um, I don't know, there are artists that are like really, really on another level, uh, like your art heroes or something, like it's so, pleasurable to watch them drawing yeah kate katie's my hero she knows that already though <laughs> shout out to katie she's she watches this but it's cool she's she's my hero as well yeah. her pieces are super stunning and striking mm. i mean you're you're gonna be a lot of people's heroes too yeah, and you can be you can be people's heroes. Like you can you most of the time people don't even imagine like how often do we tell our heroes that they are our heroes? Not often. True. Very true. Good point. So right now we're just looking at the whale. It's uh, slowly coming together a little bit, pulling inspiration from different forms. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I want the the tail to look. Uh, I've seen. Oh, I think I have to go back exactly. Yeah. Because I saw how it works in this, this in this, uh, how do you say, pose, but I don't remember how it's supposed to look. And like, you really shouldn't be afraid of using references if it helps you, in, um, you convey in your idea better.
it's like therapeutic watching uh, a skilled artist go through all this right here. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dab Dragon said that it's Zen like. That's awesome. Hey, if anyone has any questions for Marino, you can definitely feel free to post them. And like, I really enjoy having the um, the sketch. I don't, I don't like to like. I remember um, anything artists they would do line art so good. They would like just get rid of the lower the lower sketch. But I like, I really like the um, the information that the rough sketch has, and slowly replacing it with new information as I go. Mm. So I prefer to duplicate the sketch, put it lower, lower opacity and um, erase as I go or paint on top. Um, so I, I keep like that form because the, the rough sketch is like building the shape mm. and the structure. Mm -hmm. And I like to keep it and not let it go too soon. Okay, so for everyone uh, watching, um, you're saying that the so so this piece right here would be like the uh, it, it was sort of like the contrast, like lower, like like the rough sketch, and then you'd build on top of this layer right here. Yeah, and look, it just crashed. I can oh. move anything. Oh no! So what, what I have to do, I will just close everything and open it again. And it's fine. You hey, see? Hey, that's actually that's actually a faster um, restart than you would with Adobe Photoshop. Oh uh, yeah. You know. Yeah. That's like. I'm oh like, my God. yeah, didn't lose anything. It's it's fine. Um, and now like, uh, some, some artists like to really refine what they are doing before starting to blocking shapes or painting, but I like to jump in because it helps me, uh, when I'm, when I'm painting, it helps me to see better what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, now I kind of like, uh, enjoy the color whoops, that I chose for the background. So I'm going to um, put it to, to keep that color for the, the whale, but put a darker color for the backgrounds. Okay. And um, I'm actually going to fill with this. And it lets you know when you're trying to do stuff that you're not supposed to. <laughs> Breaking the rules. Look, it's hidden. Don't yeah. do it. And uh, for anyone who is thinking about trying to procreate, like the layers, you can uh, lock the transparency by swiping with two fingers. And when it changes the background like that, it means that the transparency is locked. So even though you don't notice, like it's like this, and I can uh, paint here and it won't uh, go out of that shape. Mm. I like mm. that. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And now I'm just going to I actually like the color of the of the lines for oh. some reason. Oh, Marino, we have some questions uh, from our viewers. Mm -hmm. So uh, while we while we explore this with the with the colors and the lines, uh, we have a question from Camo. Yeah. Camo, Camo would like to know from the time you started. How long did it take for you to start selling your NFTs? 
from the time I started uh, minting the artwork or yeah 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 so actually she means like um being in the crypto art scene how long did it take for you to start selling your own nfts okay so uh let me see if i can remember properly uh i actually started minting in back in april uh when i was invited to the platform to maker's place but then um i was kind of still figuring out what i wanted to do so uh, I didn't really, um, I didn't really um, uh, shared with anyone. Didn't anyone uh, didn't let anyone know, and so there was no there was no buyers. There was no one that knew that I existed. I guess. Um, so then when I when I decided to invest more on the crypto art scene and on my art on the crypto art scene, it was um, in September. Wow. So, and OK, that's a that's a long time. Uh, yeah, like I I kind of just let my pieces be on Maker's Place, just sitting there. And then on September, I was like, oh, I'm, maybe this is like, I was just enjoying my time in the community so much that it was being so much fun. I was like, oh, maybe I can sell my artwork then. And I just start, started doing baby steps. So you can either count it from April when I kind of did it, but didn't invest myself into it or when I committed in September and I got so um, uh, interested in getting to know the community that it happened mm, that makes sense that's a that actually i would prefer if people did do that right it's like hey like um instead of just dumping your stuff you know there's a whole there's a whole movement going on here you know really getting acclimated to our space and getting to know people is the right way to go because then it also prevent you from uh, being uh, susceptible to any pitfalls, you know, um, let's say uh, people trying to shill random things or, you know, not knowing about escrow and stuff like that or royalties and stuff. So that was actually a smart move. Mm -hmm. your part, you know, that's actually that's actually really good. And I do recommend that for people. Um, you you don't want to release a collection if it uh, you don't have the right viewership or things aren't in place yet, you know. Yeah, and for me, it was more like a question of burnout as I've tried a lot of things in the past that I enjoyed. But then um, when you're like trying too many things at once or you're not really like enjoying your time doing it, mm -hmm. uh, then you go into burnout. So it's not sustainable. Right. But since I was like, oh, wait, I'm having fun then it becomes so much easier because even like the thing that i was thinking like um i was getting coached on enjoying my art and loving it and i was uh my mindset started to shift i was like starting to feel really happy about whatever i did and when you love something and you're not afraid to admit it um like that's how you sell stuff um you really have to like enjoy and believe in whatever you're selling because if i for example you all probably know that i love k-pop and i can uh, talk hours <laughs> about k-pop and i will sing all the songs in k-pop so like there's no shame that i feel okay there's a little bit sometimes depending but i'm working through that but i'm like practicing owning what i enjoy so if i'm if i feel it's so easy to tell to let people know that i love k-pop why shouldn't it be easy to say that i love my art if i love my art then it makes sense to share it with people and if you love the people you're hanging out with then it's like you share with them the things you love right so 
oh, listen to this song of K-pop that I just found, it's pretty dope, and your best friend will be like, yeah, sure, or they, they will start liking it sometimes on the deep, uh, deep inside, sometimes they won't, but you will still share it with them because you love it, so it's, it's a no-brainer. Mm. And if you will, like, if nobody bought my stuff, and if nobody buys from now, I'm like, I'm like, it's fine because I love the stuff and now it's on blockchain. And that's pretty dope because I think I saw an artist telling the other day, like if, if the technology existed when they were really young artists, imagine the kind of um, history you had available already. Like 20 years from now, you have all of these paintings that you did already on the blockchain and they, they tell your story and you don't kind, you don't lose them. Sometimes you lose paintings or drawings from when you're younger and they might not be as good, but they like, they tell your story and your journey through art and through life. So I feel like if you do stuff, if, if you do any kind of uh, um, entrepreneur activity, um for yourself first like or a creative uh journey like i i feel like i'm on an adventure and so since i'm having so much fun it's fine because it's for myself first and then you share it with anyone that wants it as well like anyone who wants to join in on the fun it's basically it wow that was that was pretty well said <laughs> that was so that was so inspirational uh i have i have two more questions for you uh, since that was that was pretty great um mm -hmm. oh uh dab dragon would like to know uh who was the person holding the fire oh I, actually what was the inspiration behind the person holding the fire but we actually kind of addressed that though so, um... Oh, but I can say more specifically, it was actually K-pop as well, mm. that one. Um, it was, it kind of like starts on, um, sometimes you have like this crumble that sparks your inspiration then takes you somewhere else and that crumble for me it was K-pop. I was painting and drawing while uh, listening to music and watching uh, um, music videos from K from K-pop, and um, so yeah, it was specifically, and I can, um, I guess, I was trying to see, and then I'm not sure how to. Okay, how to. It was this artist, uh, he's so powerful on his performances mm. that it influenced me, it impacted me and I was like, oh yeah, I want to feel this as well, I want to feel that kind of power. Um, and so I was not really worried about the likeness, but it was like his uh, overall face that i that and, and energy in in the in the stage that inspired me to to do this so i hope that answers your question yeah he's a he like he likes it he he actually figured that it may have come from k-pop so yeah it's, it's pretty dope <laughs> and Which... actually there's two other pieces uh this one as well from different artists and this one was the first one uh, that i made which has a special place uh, because it was the first of the three uh, they are both like um that crumble is the same i guess you could say yeah <laughs> uh the next question is from free dan they would like to know what platform do you sell your NFT artwork on and are there any tips for artists breaking into the NFT market? I mean, we kind of touched on this. Uh, you, you mentioned Maker's Place and you also mentioned that uh, you took a little time to get acclimated with the community first before uh, starting to mint. But uh, I guess they want um, 
some additional insight. Yeah, it's only I'm only on Maker's Place right now, and uh, I guess the thing that I I said it's I guess it's it's kind of vague. I understand like when you're trying to do act actual steps towards your towards some kind of goal that you have. What I said is kind of vague, like oh, involve yourself in the community and really enjoy your time there, or get to know the space and the artists. And but yeah, the answer is kind of that simple, but it doesn't mean that it's easy because sometimes it can take you a while for you to find your community. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. you said like uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Free Dan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's- thank you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like specifically, you can find your community probably on Twitter. It's when they are more. And uh, like Katie Arrington says, like your art is your best marketing tool. So if you love doing art and sharing it with people, then yeah, it, it, it's like a journey and it's fun. You get, you, get, you get to discover your own path. I'm sure like uh, the art you said. <laughs> I've done it in different ways. Yeah. All right. Um, let's take one final look at this work in progress of a whale. Yeah, like I really like to zoom out a lot to see mm-hmm. how it is going and flipping. And um, also, now I would spend like my time. I'm not. I th- I'm not. I'm, I don't think I'm like super quick. Um, doing doing artwork, but I would like spend my time just enjoying what's what's going on. I'm here and I like to flatten things up so I can um, work them on my own play on my own uh, pace. I really enjoy clipping masks. I had some artists ask me about this uh, sometimes. So it's really helpful. Like when you have like this kind of shape, you can paint on a different layer and it will clip to that to that layer. So if I unclip, it's like this. It's trying to um, give some tips for anyone who's watching and don't know this, because it's really helpful. And experiment with stuff. And now I'm trying to find a brush with less with less less texture. I really like I really like this one. And these whales are usually yeah, they're darker on the bottom on on the top. And for example, right now I'm not like the um, the background. I don't really like how it looks, the colors, Mm -hmm. but it's giving me like a neutral base to work, um, to work on my main subject. And I can go like in the end and tweak it unless it's really uh, bugging me for some reason. like doing soft transitions between colors. I really want um, this whale to be swimming on a vast and deep sea. So like I, I want, I want it to be like on a dark background. So it feels like they really down there.
Oh, uh, that dragon, what, what does um, the layers, um, what issue do you have with them? Like, maybe I can help you with that. Yeah, Dab Dragon, pose it as a question. <laughs> oh, I guess so. You just get lost. Yeah. Do you use Photoshop? Uh, one thing that I like about um, Procreate is like, as you can see, I'm not naming any of my layers, but the way Procreate shows them to me, they like, you have the thumbnail and it's clearly showing, even if it's a tiny element, it will zoom in on the, on the layer. So like I can get away with being chaotic. Oh, so now like, I just, I just picked a, a darker color and when I, put it on the on the whale on the canvas it felt really good so i'm like oh this is yeah yeah i know exactly what you're talking about yeah I felt, I felt the same thing you're like the breadcrumb right of the thing that you enjoy like oh so this is where i have to go it's like your compass right exactly yeah Photoshop, for, for Photoshop, it will help you if you name your layers, like if it's a rough sketch um, and grouping, making groups really helpful and naming them as well. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. All right, Marino. Um... Yeah, so this piece, it's definitely going to go somewhere. It's going to need some time to be cooked up in the future. I'm pretty sure, along with the whale community, that I'm looking forward to seeing the final product. Um, do you have any final words for everyone watching? Oh, I just want to thank you, everyone, for uh, for coming by. And uh, all of your support means so much to me. I hope this was helpful for you as well. And like, I'm always a DM away if you need help with anything. Um, I just mentioned that uh, I did a live stream on Saturday and I'm planning to do more of that and even do like uh, group drawing sessions. There's this. Um, this web-based uh, like kind of Procreate and Photoshop where we can all paint on the same canvas. So uh, I'm gonna, yeah, group art session. That would be really fun. So I guess I will be like announcing it um, on Twitter and on Facebook um, for anyone that wants to join. Or just let me know and I will keep a track and <laughs> let you know afterwards. Yeah. That's and cool. oh, and thank you so much, uh, show as well. For It's really nice having such a, a nice host and one that loves art so much that you so easily like, you, all, you also have like these thoughts about art and your interpretations and it's really nice to um, yeah, to get to know what you what you think uh, and what what goes through your mind. Yeah, best Mar host for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Marino, this 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 session is about you, not about me. Don't make me cry, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but uh, thank you again um, on behalf of the rest of the whale community. Uh, thank you so much for your time. We, uh, this was this was an awesome, awesome session. Tons of jewels, gems, a lot of wisdom and insight. And um, I'm pretty sure um, this will this will be beneficial for a lot of people in the future. So thank you. Yeah, thank you.